It brought Martin Luther King and his message of nonviolence to a nationwide and worldwide audience. The speech was carried on radio and was reprinted in newspapers and magazines all over the United States and all over the world. After the speech, the name <coughs> Martin Luther King was known to many people thereafter. Now Scott will be telling you the communication concepts of the text. Cool, there's five basic communication concepts that I'd like to analyze in this speech with you guys. Um, shockingly enough, this by scholars, the I Have a Dream speech, is not his best work. Um, some scholars say that later on he does a very uh, better speech in terms, in terms of rhetoric and such. So, but, well, nonetheless, we'll look at these five basic communication concepts. Emphasizing phrases by repeating them at the beginning of sentences, which he does a lot, you know, like the title, I Have a Dream. You know, there's let freedom ring, a whole bunch of other ones that we'll analyze. Repeating the theme, keywords throughout the speech. A little different than the first one, I'll go into that later. Utilizing appropriate quotations and allusions. Using specific examples to ground arguments, such as scriptures, cases, stuff like that. And then using metaphors to highlight contrasting content. <clears throat> going on to the first one, which is emphasizing phrases by repeating them at the beginning of sentences. A uh, common uh, rhetor uh, rhetoric term that I'm sure Mr. Hassan is familiar with is uh, anaphora, which is repeating words at the beginning of neighboring clauses. So, I have a dream, yada yada, I have a dream, let freedom rings, etc. Um, this emphasizes the main points and topics that he wants to portray across to the, to the audience. Um, I, have a, I have a dream is repeated eight, in eight successive sentences and is one of the most often cited examples of anaphora, sorry, anaphora in modern rhetoric. But this is just one of eight occurrences in anaphora, anaphora in this speech. By order of introduction, here are the key phrases. 100 years later, now is the time, we must, we can never go back to, I have a dream with this faith and let freedom ring. If you look at those, just reading those phrase and sequence, you can tell the outline and structure that he wants to portray to the audience. So he sort of has an outline with those repeating sentences. Now let's look at number two, is repeating the theme words throughout the speech. This is different because it's, uh, metaphor is quite obvious, but this is more, a little more subtle in ways. Um, again, so uh, you can count the frequency of the words, like I have a dream, but this is like freedom. How many times does he say freedom in the speech? What is he emphasizing about freedom? He says freedom 20 times in the speech. This makes sense since freedom is the main primary primary theme of the speech. Other key themes, uh, co common repeated words are freedom, uh, we as a nation, our, our actions, you as in what you have to do, nation, America, American, justice, injustice, dream. So all those are, are referenced a lot. Um, now let's go to number three, utilizing appropriate quotations or allusions. Uh, evoking historic or literary uh, references provide a powerful speech writing technique that I think all of us could use a little more. Sorry, tell me to, yeah. But we can all improve our credibility and arguments by referring to those kind of things like Mr. Hassan teaches us. Uh, an example of this would be he, he references Lincoln, Lincoln's memorial, Gettysburg, sorry, Lincoln's Gettysburg address speech. Um, and then he also references the Declaration of Independence and he quotes biblical texts as well throughout his entire speech. Looking at communication concept number four, using specific examples to ground arguments. The speech is greatly improved when you provide specific examples which illustrate your logical and perhaps theoretical arguments. Um, a great example of this is that he uses a lot of geographical references. He uses, mis just to name a few, Mississippi, New York, Mississippi again, Alabama, South Carolina, Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, and oh, Tennessee, Pennsylvania. So he's just always uh, he's always listing these things to to bring in the audience, you know, give them a uh, definitely a sense of personal relationship. Number five is using metaphor to highlight the contracting con uh, concepts, and uh, his main metaphor that King evokes to con 
uh, contrasting metaphors of dark and desolate valleys of segregation to a sunlit path of racial justice. Uh, so it's just those are a few to look at, and now I'm going to pass it on to the conclusion. Not only is Martin Luther King one of the most motivational speakers of all time, he is also one of the most inspirational. Among the speeches that King presented, I Have a Dream is one that many people will not forget. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was named Man of the Year by Time Magazine in 1963 and became not only a symbolic leader of American blacks, but also a world figure. I will discuss how King's extreme dedication and firm commitment led him to be such an inspirational person. Martin Luther King had a strong foundation that he built upon. Martin Luther attended segregated public schools in Georgia, graduating from high school at the age of 15. He received a bachelor's degree in 1948 from Morehouse College. After three years of theological study at Crozer Theological Seminary in Pennsylvania, where he was elected president of a predominantly white senior class, he was awarded a BD in 1951. He then enrolled in graduate studies at Boston University, completing his residence for the doctor in 1953 and receiving the degree in 1955. Next, I'll discuss some of the reasons why King had a significant impact on both races of black and white people. He was a member of the executive committee of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, also known as the NAACP. In 1955, Dr. King accepted the leadership of the first great Negro nonviolent demonstration of contemporary times in the United States, the bus boycott that lasted 382 days. On December 21st, 1956, after the Supreme Court of the United States had declared unconstitutional the laws requiring segregation on buses, Negroes and whites were the buses as equals. Finally, I will talk about how King overcame many hardships throughout his life. King was arrested many times, his home was bombed, and his, he was subjected to personal abuse. At the same time, he emerged as a Negro leader of the first rank. Martin Luther King was a very dedicated person that was committed to his work. In the 11 year period between 1957 and 1968, Dr. King traveled over 6 million miles and spoke over 2,500 times appearing wherever there was injustice, <coughs> protest, and action. Dr. King wrote five books as well as numerous articles. Today we have talked about why we chose Martin Luther King, the significance of the speech, the communication concepts from the text, and lecture that apply to the speaker and the speech, and why he inspires us. We have given you some brief background on King as well. Martin Luther King was a historical figure who will be remembered forever. He accomplished many goals <coughs> and a significant impact on segregation and freedom for black people. We are always recognized with famous words, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. 